G'day team, and once again, welcome back to Q Manufacturing. I have a pretty simple one for you today, and I'm going to try a slightly different format. I'm going to talk about some background, and then make the part, and then cover off some of the lessons learned. If you want to jump straight into the build, there's a link below, likewise for the lessons learned section. The part I'm making today is from a Formula 3 car, a 2007 Dallara, and it covers a side pod opening and where the exhaust pod exits. That's the exhaust hole, general side pod opening thing. F3 cars don't have cooling fans and are very aerodynamically sensitive, so they have a few panels on the side pods that can be added or removed to change the cooling characteristics of the car. Delara provides some helpful tables that tell you what to remove or add to get the cooling you need, and they also provide tables that tell you what you have to do with the wings to bring the car back into a neutral aerodynamic trim, because the exit airflow out of the radiators actually affects the downforce the car makes. This is actually the fourth time I've made one of these components for the same customer, the third time I've made an exhaust one, and the second iteration of this exact one. Previous ones were for the other side with no exhaust, or for a previous exhaust pipe with a different exit position and shape. It was out here somewhere and didn't actually have an end. Apparently the one this one is replacing got damaged when the car was going in for a repaint. It's a pretty simple part to make, and I'm going to use my CNC router to create a 3mm thick PVC foam core, and then do a symmetric two layer per side glass layup using 200 grams per square meter glass with pliers biased in 0, 90 and 45, 45 directions. From there, I'm going to throw the whole thing back on the router and cut it down to its final dimension and then, bam, you have this part. Previous versions of this have been done with wet layup and then vacuum bag. This makes for a super light part, but I've been dealing with pinholes and they're a real pain to get the surface fixed on. Normally I'd mix up some micro beads and squeeze them in to fill all the voids. It works, but it's all too much effort. This time I'm going to infuse it, and I'm going to use that as an excuse to try out my new infusion connector I've designed. Anyway, that's enough talking from me. Enjoy the show. Feel free to tell me what you would do differently in the comments below. Just please be civil. So for this job we're using a 3mm PVC foam core. I'm using PVC foam this time instead of polyurethane uh, because I can get it in this thickness. I can't get the polyurethane stuff in this thickness, so we're going for the slightly more expensive PVC. The panel itself is pretty small and pretty light, so it doesn't need a thick core, so 3mm will do. So first up, what we're going to do with it is just take our um, core hole punch, it's going to push it through. Alright, so I couldn't get good leverage filming there, um, so I just had to move it across. Now you have some double holes. So I'm just using two layers of 185 grams per square meter um, glass for this. We biased it at 0.90 and 4545 in a balanced layup.
So just apply a very light layer of uh, 3M Super 77 to this. Um, so it'll stick down flat and it will stay nice and flat during the infusion. You won't get any bridging around the, uh, around the core. I'll do that for every layer and that should make it pretty good for actually laying up and ensuring consistency of the part. As I said before, the core both has infusion holes in it and it also has some um, grooves cut into it. I've them using a hacksaw just to ensure that you get enough uh, flow through. They're pretty small. They're only about, um, uh, what is it, like half a mil deep. So they're not very much to them. It's the intent that counts. I'm just using some tape to reinforce the edges just so there's a bit more material to go through because of the mechanical fasteners used to hold it all in place. That's the top layer of 45. Just going to lay this down and then work it out from, from the center. Just so we don't get any bridging. Now, I'm a big fan of these infusion ports and a little bit biased when I say that because I actually designed them myself. You may have seen when I put it in but it's just a metal washer um, and then there's also uh, this tacky tape that goes straight on the metal washer so you can see visually whether there's any air lines or any um, pleats or anything that are going to let air into your infusion. And then to insert your hose, all you do, go straight through like that. And now we have an airtight solution. Um, you know, let's suck this bag down uh, and then do a drop down test. Bag's all sealed, ready for the drop test. We'll just leave it for a bit, see if it drops, and then if it doesn't drop from there, we'll leave it overnight, and then we'll infuse in the morning. Welcome back. So we've had some time for this to cure. Uh, it's been sitting out in the sun as well. Great idea, gets the heat into the part and allows everything to fully cure. However, uh, it rained this afternoon, so it's a little bit damp. It's not gonna damage anything, just mildly annoying because my mirror is a little bit dirty than I want it to be. All right, so it's uh, time to demold. That part's coming out pretty nice. We've had a very slight delam in here. Um, it's on the edge, it's not much of an issue. We'll just mix up a little bit of extra epoxy and throw it in there and let it cure. Um, but the part's functional. Uh, it needs to go on the mill now and get cut down to size. Before I put it down, I should mention, there's actually some alignment marks you might be able to see here. I'm um, just running along the, aft, uh, along the axis of the machine, both X and Y. 
I've got the same marks on this part here. So uh, the long one is what we're going to line it up to, and then the cross ones is what we get our zero point off. Overall, I'm happy with this part. There's a minor layup imperfection right here where I ripped the glass while demolding it. It's been bonded back in, but it's still visible. That repair also resulted in this um, dull patch that you can see here if I get the light on it. Um, it's not bad, and you know this panel will work for its intended purpose, and it will also keep my customer happy, and that's the important part. From here, it's off to him for a sand, and then for its paint job. With all that work done, I think we can now talk about some of the lessons learned. Even on the simple things, you can learn something. This is something we normally do at my work. We look through what we did and we always try and do better. I have four things I want to cover off on this video. Some really quick and some will require a little bit of consideration. First up, my silicon infusion connectors. These worked great. I have to remember to put the tape on them before they go under the bag, but other than that, they were just fantastic. The fact the tape is under the bag means you can inspect it for any adhesion defects that may allow air through, and it just makes that little bit easy to seal. The requirement to just push the hose in is super easy, and they're very flexible so the cured epoxy falls right off them. I'm quite happy with them. Next, I want to look at how this part compares between the infusion method and my normal wet layup. The infusion is cleaner and easier to set up. There's no time constraints or anything like that, and it's a single layup for the whole thing. I normally do this as a two-part layout for the wet lay. The surface skin first, and then the core and backing skin together. That makes the infusion a pretty good effort saver. There is a slight negative though, the parts are a little heavier. This is clocked in at 88 grams. Previously there have been 82 grams or so, so that's a 7% weight increase for the infusion. Now in real terms for this part, it's only 6 grams, and not much to be worried about, but it's still a consideration, particularly for larger parts. I don't know how well that 7% scales, if it's linear or whatever. All that being said, it's a far better surface to paint or wrap than the resin starved ones I've made previously, and it even feels just like a bit stronger and a bit stiffer. The strength of the two methods is actually something I think I want to compare at a later time, if I get around to it. As a negative for the infusion, I wasted a heap of resin. I did the maths, and I didn't trust my numbers, so I added a bunch more and you saw the results. Next time, I'm just going to trust my numbers. So on to the next point. 3M Super 77 on the first layer. When the part came out of the bag, it was still kind of sticky on the tool side. Not uncured epoxy sticky, but rather spray adhesive sticky tacky. After a solvent wipe and a wash in water, it came good, which makes me think the Super 77 used to tack it down didn't dissolve into the epoxy. If you catch the surface right in the light, you can see small imperfections. If you look at the reflection of the light there, you can see those small things. I'm curious as to the effects that Super 77 has on the tool side layers. Um, I'm probably going to knock up some test panels just to have a look and see about having it on that side versus not having it and I'm not using it at all. Additionally, I'm going to try and look for another tack adhesive and give that a try. Maybe some air tack or whatever I can find from a local supplier. I find it's difficult to get that kind of stuff over here or at least difficult to get a good range. 
Now on to the last one and the big one. The highly embarrassing tearing of the glass fibers when removing the peel ply. Peel ply, as the name implies, is designed to be peeled off the top layer of a composite layer without damaging the stuff underneath. It's intended to leave a surface of fully cured resin whose cure was not inhibited by exposure to air, provide a mechanical release for anything that sticks to the top layer such as infusion mesh, and provide a keyed and clean surface that requires little to no prep for subsequent layups or bonding. There's a bit more to the way it works, and I'm going to caveat this by saying, take it all with a grain of salt, I'm not an engineer. Actually, I am an engineer. But this still isn't my area of expertise, so caveat emptor. Peel ply is designed to operate by causing localized failure of the composite matrix through the peel failure mode. There are a number of different failure modes for composite matrix in interlaminar failure, but they pretty much boil down to either a shear or a peel failure. Shear is where two reinforcement layers are trying to move in opposite directions. With a suitably stiff reinforcement and suitably flexible matrix, you get a perfect load distribution across the whole joint. And this means that theoretically you have to overload all that material at once, which as you can imagine will take quite a bit of force. Whereas by rolling the peel ply back on itself, you're causing very high localized stresses at the peel ply next layer interface, which causes the matrix right there to fail and not damage anything else. Now let's look at how I remove the peel ply. You can see that where I have the rip, I'm not pulling the peel ply back on itself at all. I'm almost pulling it straight up. This is causing the matrix to transfer a heap of load into the part and the weakest link to fail. In this case, the edge of the fiberglass where it's nice and thin. Once that has started to fail, it propagates until it hits something more substantial and then the whole layer goes. There were multiple points where I could have and I should have stopped it, but I was rushing and that's my fault. Thankfully, it was easy to repair, but I can still see that blemish and it bugs me. It's worth noting that when I attack it from the other direction, you can see that I remove the spy wrap so the peel ply can be folded right back on itself and then pull it off in that way with no problems. I might remove the spy wrap before removing the peel ply from now on to try and do this better. So this brings me to a close for the day. I hope you get something out of it. If you have any comments or suggestions, whack them in a message below. Otherwise, thank you for watching.